In our last episode, we bummed you guys out by revealing that Wayne's World came out 25 years ago. Well, let's pile on to that lingering depression with the sobering reality that Donnie Brasco has its 20th anniversary next week. Ah, forget about it. Hopefully this will cheer you up. Forget about it, it's right. Here are seven things you didn't know about Donnie Brasco. Probably. I bet you forgot that Paul Giamatti and Tim Blake Nelson were in Donnie Brasco, but that's not what our first thing is. It's things you didn't know, not things you maybe forgot. Anyway, in this scene where Donnie is explaining the many nuances of forget about it, there's an audio swap. Hey, Paulie, you got a one-inch pecker, and Paulie says, forget about it. Right there when they refer to Paulie, the name was changed from Booby, and you can hear it in the audio. <laughs> Hey, Bully, you got a one-inch pecker, and Bully says, forget about it. They had to change the name because with Donnie Brasco being based on a true story, they had to deal with a lot of real people, and the real Booby objected to having his name used and put an injunction on the film. Quite frankly, if my name was Booby, I'd object to it being used too. In the end, a judge wound up throwing it out anyway. Forget about it, the judge said. Booby was a real criminal who didn't have a leg to stand on, but using his name wouldn't really have made a big difference in the final film overall, so it definitely wouldn't have been worth dying on that hill. Forget about it. Paulie, forget about it. <laughs> Next thing. <laughs> now let's talk about a scene where they didn't swap or loop any dialogue. For this boat scene, they were actually filming in an area that was on the flight path to the closest airport. Typically when you're dealing with tons of garbage background noise, you shoot the scene and just fix it in post with ADR. And that was the plan. But surprisingly, they decided against looping because the performances were so good. The problem is, is that, you know, you think that he's helping you. But he's hurting you. After all, it's a scene where nothing is really happening. It's just two characters talking. So the performance and dialogue are everything, which made director Mike Newell decide to use the original noisy track from the location. He made the same call here for this car scene. This time, the issue was the sound of their leather jackets creaking against the car seats. Forget about it. Huh? One thing I know is boats. I'd like to pop them, throw them in the water, take the fucking boat. Once again, Newell felt the performances were just, I mean, forget about it. So the creaky jacket stayed in. Moving on. One of the best parts of the Florida montage is this part, where all the guys are playing tennis. But you probably didn't know that all of the action in this scene was completely improvised. They were running behind schedule that day and losing light. They just didn't have the time to plan and choreograph the scene's action like they thought they would. So it fell on the actors to come up with ways to be funny while they were playing tennis. As far as whether they succeeded? Come on, forget about it. Oh, Christ, I think I sh my pants. Riding around with a lion in the backseat of a car seems like one of the more outlandish parts of Donnie Brasco. But even this part of the movie is based on reality. The real lefty did, in fact, ride around with a lion in the backseat. His biggest gripe was about the lion scratching his leather interior. Kind of seems like lefty couldn't see the forest for the lion that was in his car. Oh, forget about it. It's worth clarifying that the lion was still a cub when Lefty got him, so he usually kept the lion in the social club and would feed him 20 to 30 steaks a day. Eventually, the lion got too big, as lion cubs tend to do, circle of life and all that, and the guys couldn't play with him anymore. To get rid of the lion, they eventually chained him to a tree in a park in Brooklyn and paid a couple a few hundred bucks to call the cops and tell them there was a lion in the park. Problem was, the police thought the couple was just a pair of drunks and didn't come to the park. They had to run the whole scheme again the next night, and then that time, the cops finally sent a squad car and found the lion. Made all the papers and everything, forget about it. One thing that deviated from reality in Donnie Brasco was how much the real Joseph Pistone slash Donnie Brasco got to see his family, because it was way worse in real life. It's $20 that you can't get through this entire meal without saying three words. All right? You lose. The real Pistone family was moved across the country after Joseph's first nine months undercover, and here's where it gets rough. He was undercover as Donnie Brasco for six years. His only contact with his family was by telephone that entire time. When he was finally pulled out of the operation, he was actually on the verge of being made. In fact, Pistone didn't want to be pulled out for that reason, but the FBI felt that letting him essentially join the mob would cross the line of him straight up becoming a criminal in order to bring down criminals. Forget about it. Would have been a total quagmire, said the FBI. This shot right here, this shot literally only exists because of the trailer. The studio insisted that they get a shot of Johnny Depp firing a gun wearing a shirt that said FBI on it because they wanted it for the trailer. So Mike Newell and the team figured this would be the best place to crowbar it into the movie and it worked well enough. Joe Stone, remember me? Southern District. 
Hey, what are you, what are you doing? I'm grab my cock. While we're at it, this is another scene that Newell hadn't planned for the movie, and it's actually his most hated scene in the entire film. The studio felt that there weren't enough scenes with Donnie in any real danger, so they came up with this whole situation of him getting recognized by someone at the airport. And right about now, you're probably recognizing, boom, forget about it, bonus thing you didn't know. And if that's not enough for you, we have another. This scene is only in the movie because of Al Pacino. He felt that the film needed a moment where we see the irrational violence of the mob guys. Though Newell felt that they'd already gotten that in the film, he listened to Pacino, and once the film was completed, forget about it, he was very glad that he did. Lefty's sunglasses were a pretty big part of his whole look. In fact, Al Pacino chose Lefty's glasses himself, boom, bonus thing. But another important character trait was that Lefty was a smoker. In fact, the real Lefty died of lung and testicular cancers after being released from prison, boom, yet another bonus thing. Yeah, he's cancer to prick. Yeah, you didn't know that? I'm in the medical books for that. It was kind of a hassle to deal with the smoke and smoking on set though, especially in this car scene. They had to have a prop guy in the back seat just to pump all of the smoke in the car. For the scenes where we actually see Lucky smoking, Al Pacino didn't smoke real cigarettes. They were herbal, total fugazis. How do you know it's a fugazi? You looked at it for two seconds. What, it's a fake. Yeah, I know what a fugazi is. By the way, the word fugazi was itself a fugazi. It wasn't real mob slang at the time of the film. It was completely made up. They stole the word from the name of a very real limo service in New York, and boom, that was a very real bonus thing you didn't know. You want bonus things? Forget about it. We got them all. Okay, maybe not them all, but we got several. I forget about it. Well, we've lost track of how many things we covered today. Once you factor in all the bonus things, forget about it. We've also lost track of how many times we said forget about it. And if you were taking a shot every time we said forget about it, seek medical attention immediately. Thanks for watching and subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies and sometimes ways to get rid of your illegal pet lion right here on Things You Didn't Know. Now forget about it.